So now we've got genetic power. So how long is it going to take for that to spread around the globe? And what's going to be done with it? We are not afraid to entrust the people with unpleasant facts. Foreign ideas. Alien philosophies. And competitive values. And now for something completely different. For a nation that is afraid to let its people judge the truth and falsehood in an open market, it is a nation that is afraid of its people. Completely different. Scientists say they could bring back woolly mammoths, but maybe they shouldn't. Our scientists have done things which nobody's ever done before. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could that they didn't stop to think if they should. The central idea behind the Jurassic Park films, using recovered DNA to genetically resurrect an extinct species, may be getting closer to reality with the launch this week of a new company that aims to bring back woolly mammoths thousands of years after the last of the giants vanished from the Arctic tundra. With a $15 million influx of cash, Harvard University genetics professor George Church, who is recognized for his groundbreaking work in genome sequencing and gene splicing, hopes the company might usher in a new era in which mammoths walk the Arctic tundra again. He and other researchers also hope that a revived species can play a role in combating climate change. We are working towards bringing back species that left an ecological void as they went extinct, Colossal said. We are identifying species that can be given a new set of tools from their extinct relatives to survive in new environments that desperately need them. To be sure, what's being proposed is actually a hybrid created using a gene editing tool known as CRISPR-Cas9 to splice bits of DNA recovered from frozen mammoth specimens into that of an Asian elephant, the mammoth's closest living relative. The resulting animal known as a mammoth ant would look, and presumably behave, much like a woolly mammoth. Some say reintroduced mammoths could help reverse climate change. Resurrecting the mammoth, according to Church and others, would close a gap in the ecology left by its extinction some 10,000 years ago, although some isolated populations are thought to have remained in Siberia until about 1,700 BC. The largest mammoths were estimated to have stood more than 10 feet tall at the shoulder, and weighed up to 15 tons. Mammoths once scraped away layers of snow, so that cold air could reach the soil, and maintain the permafrost. After they disappeared, the accumulated snow, with its insulating properties, meant the permafrost began to warm, releasing greenhouse gases, Church and others contend. They argue that returning mammoths, or at least hybrids that would fill the same ecological niche, to the Arctic could reverse that trend. With the reintroduction of the woolly mammoth, we believe our work will restore this degraded ecosystem to a richer one, similar to the tundra that existed as recently as 10,000 years ago, Colossal says. Well, the question is, how can you know anything about an extinct ecosystem? And therefore, how could you ever assume that you can control it? Love Dallin, a professor in evolutionary genetics at the Stockholm-based Center for Paleogenetics, is skeptical of that claim. I personally do not think that this will have any impact, any measurable impact, on the rate of climate change in the future, even if it were to succeed, he states. There is virtually no evidence, in support of the hypothesis that trampling of a very large number of mammoths would have any impact on climate change, and it could equally well, in my view, have a negative effect on temperatures. The techniques might be better used to help endangered species. 
But even if the researchers at Colossal can bring back mammoths, and that is not certain, the obvious question is, should they? I think there is a lot of technological development that can be done, and, we can learn a lot about how to edit genomes, and that could be really useful for endangered species today. Joseph Fredrickson, a vertebrate paleontologist, and director of the Weiss Earth Science Museum in Menasha, Wisconsin, was inspired as a child by the original Jurassic Park movie. But even he thinks that the more important goal should be preventing extinction rather than reversing it. If you can create a mammoth, or at least an elephant that looks like a good copy of a mammoth, that could survive in Siberia, you could do quite a bit for the white rhino, or the giant panda, he claims. Especially for animals that have dwindling genetic diversity, Fredrickson says, adding older genes from the fossil record, or entirely new genes could increase the health of those populations. It's never going to be possible to create a species that is 100% identical. But what if we could use this technology, not to bring back mammoths but to save elephants? Colossal's expressed aim also brings up another ethical concern, although the extinction of the mammoth thousands of years ago left a gap in the ecosystem, that ecosystem has presumably now adapted, at least imperfectly, to their absence. There is a new normal that has existed for thousands of years that has adapted to the continually changing climate, Fredrickson says. Bringing back something that has all the characteristics that would have thrived in the Pleistocene, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to survive today, especially when you're mixing in the unknowns of other genes, that are acting in a warm weather tropical animal, and then trying to move it to a new environment. In yet a different sense, there's the question of how mammoths might fit in. The proposed, de-extinction of mammoths, raises a massive ethical issue. The mammoth was not simply a set of genes, it was a social animal, as is the modern Asian elephant, Matthew Cobb, a professor of zoology at the University of Manchester, told The Guardian, in 2017. What will happen when the elephant-mammoth hybrid is born? How will it be greeted by elephants? The predicted six-year timeline would be exceptionally short. All of this, of course, assumes that producing a mammophant is even possible. Colossal says it hopes to produce an embryo in six years. Four million individual genetic mutations separating the ancient creatures, from Asian elephants, the task of gene splicing could prove a mammoth undertaking. Perhaps an even bigger obstacle might be, developing an artificial uterus for gestating the embryos. Even Church acknowledges that this might not be so easy. The company intends to develop, a pumping system for gas exchange, nutritional, and waste metabolites exchange, and umbilical blood supply with the goal of carrying a woolly mammoth embryo to term in vitro, among other things. Researchers have been working on just such a device, but technical hurdles remain. But Church and his colleagues aren't alone in their ambition. The idea of mammoth de-extinction has been around for some time, and other groups, such as the California-based non-profit Revive and Restore, which last year managed the first ever clone of an endangered species, the black-footed ferret, have also been working on a mammoth-elephant hybrid. You crazy son of a bitch, you did. The traditional scientific view is that, our ancestors hunted the mammoth to extinction, while more recent theories point to habitat destruction at the end of the last ice age, as the biggest factor, but with humans still taking part of the blame. 
Fredrickson thinks that's one of the reasons that the question of de-extinction, fueled by pop culture, and real-world advances in science, is raised so frequently by the patrons, at the museum he heads. I think, as humans, we have a little bit of guilt in us, still knowing that we almost certainly contributed to that extinction event. This may be a way of getting that burden off of our backs, Fredrickson says. I'm not sure I know what you're talking about. I'm talking about man-made cataclysmic change. What kind of change? Change is like death. You don't know what it looks like until you're standing at the gates. We would like to know what you think. So leave us a comment below, and hit the subscribe button for the latest videos from The Raw News. Don't forget to hit the bell to receive update notifications. As always, thank you for watching. God bless everyone, and remember, the truth is out there, never stop searching. What remains is the raw, shocking, humiliating truth at the bottom. And now for something completely different. The truth is out there. Never stop searching. Completely different. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. If it's not the wrong news, it's just completely different. Subscribe today because I like it wrong.